So the last episode, you may recall, I made bread. So naturally, this week's episode is all things toast and Sammy's. Bread for breakfast, toast for lunch, carbs. All carbs. Therefore, I couldn't let much time pass before making a grilled cheese. Plus, it had been a while since I'd had one. This was a spicy one made with a Monterey style, and I unfortunately didn't have soup to go with it, so I added tomatoes. One thing I love and appreciate about a good olive oil is its ability to taste buttery on a piece of bread. And this didn't disappoint. And it's moments like this that I wish I owned a panini press, but I made do it with my little mini cast iron pan before I rusted it, of course. And I have to say, I also love the einkorn flour that I used in this sourdough because it lends like a bit of a like sweet nuttiness to the bread as well. So if you were wondering why it looks so yellow, that's why. In the last episode, you may also remember that I made oatmeal with blood orange poached pears. Well, that was delicious. So I wanted to have it again, except I was in a rush and I needed to eat something before Pilates. And since it's my goal to use up stuff that's in the pantry, let's face it, oats are easy. You can't beat a warm breakfast when it's this cold outside. And I don't know if you noticed my knife skills just now, but let's just say there's a reason why I cut out most of it. I've needed to sharpen this knife for like at least a month now. So I grabbed this sharpener that I pre-ordered like the end of last year, because while I really wanted to invest in a whetstone, 100% convinced that I would mess it up. Pretty sure that I found this on like an Instagram ad, I want to say. They, they just be enabling me on a daily basis. It's, it's sad the rubber like piping around it was leaving some marks on my counter. So I switched to my cutting board, but it came right off when I cleaned it later. And I told you there was gonna be bread. So I had to make one of my old favorites, which was roasted red pepper toast. Before I went plant-based though, I used to have this as a sandwich with goat cheese. Seriously, this was like the longest standing hyperfixation meal for me, but clearly not enough because the way it's been so long since I've made it, so long in fact, that apparently I've forgotten how, because this is definitely not it. I wouldn't have cut these pieces this small and I overcooked it, but that could also be because I just was distracted or bored, who knows. If you're ever curious about just like any of my dishes, utensils, cookware, all that stuff is always linked on my blog and that'll also be linked down below. 
Huge thank you to Squarespace because I use them to host it. So if you have any need for a domain, you can use their app to create a bio site and have that be your landing page to navigate people wherever you want them to go. If you offer services, you can even use Squarespace to schedule your clients, an e-commerce store if you sell products, or even set up a website to act as your portfolio. And of course, run a blog. So the options are endless. Wait, did I mention you can also do newsletters too? And you can get a discount with my code ABetweenE or just head to squarespace.com backslash ABetweenE to get 10% off. And if you follow me on Instagram, you may have saw these um, Vietnamese spring rolls that I posted on my stories. I got a few requests for it that I film it. So here it is. And I didn't have much in my fridge. So I grabbed kind of like whatever. But I knew from the beginning that these carrots look suspicious. Yet I took them out anyway. And let's just say it didn't work out. And technically I have posted something similar to this but with tofu pickled vegetables and cilantro these are great for throwing together a bunch of fresh ingredients with some protein for a meal that's satisfying but also light at the same time and they double as a fun activity to do with like friends or family so i made actual shrimp ones with my mom and she loved them of course i'm using plant-based shrimp though so these are made from root vegetables and they also make really good crab cakes so those will be in another episode because i have yet to show them to you for some reason despite me buying them like several times now And last time I was in New York, I stumbled upon a Shopify store, which I didn't even know was a thing. But right away, I noticed that there were some brands in there that I had been meaning to order from online. So this was my moment. Instant gratification. Money leaves my wallet and I don't have to wait for shipping. Priceless. So this is what I got. 
And the thing I was most excited about was this syrup from Ghetto Gastro. They are the creators who actually collaborated to make the air fryer that I got from Target. And I already have their waffle mix. You may have seen it in the pantry organization video. At the time I got it though, the syrup sold out. So I'm looking forward to using those together. But in the meantime, this recipe I decided to make because the syrup tasted like a bit deeper than I was expecting it to be. So I thought it would make a good like brown sugar substitute. Again, I'm making something that's actually inspired by something I've made before, which was a, um, it was like a peach cobbler parfait. So this is basically that, but without the yogurt. That's it for now. If you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.